Are you ready to get from point A to point B in your professional and even your personal life? With his proven 99-day performance accelerator process, this man's no-nonsense approach gets you focused on your real priorities and take the essential actions necessary to your success. International speaker and author of the book, Change Your Life 20 Seconds at a Time, he has coached salespeople and entrepreneurs around the world to achieve tremendous breakthroughs by overcoming obstacles and costly limiting beliefs. Please welcome the man passionate and relentless about you achieving your success, the master of accountability, Mr. Denny Mayu. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Focus 180 Podcast, and I hope you're ready because today I'm here with Jim Root. Jim is an expert on creating revenue and trains businesses on how to create an efficient and effective sales process. He's helping them to reach the million dollar club. He's also a professional speaker and shares his experience and wisdom on how to get the greatest sales performance without being pushy or salesy. Jim, how are you doing today? Welcome to the podcast. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No, I'm really happy that you're here. And it's a topic that I really love to talk about sales. And I'm glad you're here. And I'm I'm kind of curious. It's going to be cool to learn from a pro, actually. This is awesome for me and for my listener. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. You're welcome. So before we start this topic, is there anything you would like to share so we get to know you a little bit better? Something that most people don't know about you. Nothing about business, but maybe something different. So I, uh, there is actually something that not very many people know because I love my job and I do a lot of work. And so I'm always talking about work and I'm excited about it. So everyone thinks that that's all I care about, but I love being outdoors. I am an avid golfer. I'm an avid hiker. I go bike riding. I snow ski. I water ski. I swim. And if I'm not working, I'm doing one of those things. So uh, it's something that uh, it surprises a lot of people that I am so outdoorsy since I do so much work all the time. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work experience now. Where have you worked? Job title? Which industry? Have you done sales all your life? So uh, that's an interesting question because I have never actually had a regular job. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. Uh, I started when I was a kid. My dad was an entrepreneur. So that was the model I had moving forward. And when I was a young teenager, 13 years old, I started my first business and I just never got a regular job. So interestingly enough, my experience took me around all different types of things. Uh, being an entrepreneur, yeah, I've always been in sales because as an entrepreneur, you have to be in sales. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I was in financial services. I was in real estate for a while. I did some multi-level marketing. I, uh, I, I had my own little service business uh, when I was younger doing lawns and car washes. So I've been all over the, 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 the range in my life I'm focused finally now on sales because I realize it's it's what I love to do the most. Very good. So you love to do sales. So let's talk about your business right now, which uh, what's the name of it actually? And uh... so my parent company is Next Step Training and Events. But uh, for me, I have what's called the Max Revenue Program, where we focus on building the, the sales process so that it is both efficient and effective. Very good. And uh, so what do you do, what do you do? I know it's a silly question, but it's important to me. Why do you do this every single day? So the reason I do it, and it's actually, that's actually a really, really great question because I'm not about, it, funny enough, even though I'm all about the revenue, I'm not really about the money. I'm about that, that transformation that I see people go through when they get it, right? All of a sudden sales is easy. All of a sudden they have the money they need to pay their bills. All of a sudden they, 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 they are realizing that this is their dream, right? That they've, that they've realized the, the income levels that they want for their business. Um, I do some work with big corporations, but generally, I focus mostly on the mid-range entrepreneurs, the startup entrepreneurs, because it's more fun for me to see them 
really grow and become a successful entrepreneur. Very good. How did you become an expert on sales? I know you did it all your life. Is there a time or when did you say, hey, you know what? I'm good at this. How did you so so it was uh, it was out of necessity. Uh, my expert status. Uh, I'm I'm pretty good at talking to people. I'm pretty good at connecting with them and and uh, you know convincing people to buy stuff from me. But I would say my expert status came in the mid '90s when I thought I was a great salesperson, and so I got involved in a complicated project, not really important. But I got involved with a project that cost me almost $60,000 and resulted in zero dollars in sales. And I thought to myself, maybe it's me. And so it was in that, it was in that moment that I, I'd had some successes in the past and I decided I'm going to start reading what other people do to be successful and how sales really works and how do we get people excited about buying things. I've read so many different sales books, I can't even tell you, and I've been to so many sales conferences trying to learn every single technique I possibly could so that I could first and foremost, be successful in my own business. <laughs> uh, but once I realized that I really had a, uh, a passion and a love for the sales process, that was when I realized, gosh, this is really who I am. This is what I love to do. Awesome. So what's your philosophy on selling? What's what? Say that again. I try to say it in an English word. Philosophy. What's your oh, philosophy? philosophy? No, I, I just did, uh, couldn't hear it. Sorry about that. Well, that's okay. I'm well, used to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so my philosophy is, is a little different than what you see in the sales community right now. Uh, there's a lot of people out there. The most famous one is ClickFunnels uh, and other sorts of online platforms uh, using social media and email marketing to really uh, generate sales. My problem with that and what's different between my philosophy and theirs is they're focused on passive selling. They're focused on just throwing your name out there, getting people aware of who you are and hoping that they'll buy from you. I believe it's a little bit more effective to actively go out find ideal clients, find people that are in need for what you have, that maybe they wouldn't, maybe they're not actively looking for you. So you have a responsibility if you have something that is of value to them to find those people and make that presentation. So my philosophy is focused, focused on actively selling rather than passively selling. I love it. Very good. So we're talking about sales and uh, I know a lot of people dislike selling. They dislike salespeople, they dislike the <laughs> act of selling. Why do you think that is? So it's actually pretty simple. Um, the reason that people don't like salespeople and they don't want to be one mm -hmm. uh, is that they have this definition of what selling is. In their mind, selling is making someone buy something that they don't really want. Well, that's not selling. That's, uh, that, that's holding people hostage. That's, <laughs> that's strong arming them. That, that's basically robbery, right? It's like taking something that they, that taking their money when they don't really want what you have. That's not selling. And so what I tell every single one of my clients and we do, uh, we do an exercise where I have them repeat this over and over again, stop selling. I'm not going to sell anything ever again. I'm not going to sell anything ever again. What we are going to do is we are going to help people buy. And so people, they either want what you have, they need what you have, and they can afford it, or they can't. And if they want it, and they need it, and they can afford it, help them make that decision for themselves. And if you're not helping them, if you don't know your product well enough, and if you're not understanding how it can help this person, that's what you need to focus on is how does your product help people and then they'll buy from you. Tim, you said something very important. And I think it's the first time I hear that. You said you're not selling, you help people. 
by. You want to talk about it a few seconds? I mean, say it again in a way. So sure. that's very important. Sure, because you're not selling, right? Because this definition of sales is that you are forcing something on somebody that doesn't have real value. Okay. Well, you can't really sell that anyway, right? No one's going to buy something from you or they'll buy it and then they'll ask for a refund. The dreaded R word. I, ne- <laughs> I hate the dreaded R word, right? Never, never refund. <laughs> If they want a refund, you didn't do a good job of really helping them, right? A, a, a surgeon or a doctor who has a, a patient come into their office They don't have to sell them a prescription. They don't have to sell them their services. Why? Right. Because this pers- they're helping this person feel better. And so if you focus on how you are helping them, that makes everything different. It's, it's now a collaboration. We're now working together rather than working, rather than this adversarial where I win because I got the money and you lost because you had to pay me. No, I never feel bad about taking a fee for my services because I know they got at least twice as much value as they paid me. Very good. Very, very, very good. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, today's world, social media. Is that important? Are we selling on that? What's your recommendation? So social media is great, right? It's a great opportunity to get yourself out there in front of people. And I think everyone should be using social media at some level within their business. But if you're hoping that social media is going to drive sales, um, good luck with that. Uh, That is a very, very expensive process. Because what you're doing is you're just throwing content out there, hoping that people will decide that they need help and that they want to buy what you have. And it is very, very ineffective. And that goes back to active selling versus passive selling. Social media is passive selling. Now, it is a very important component of credibility and for letting people see that you are good at what you do but it's not, it's not selling. That's really a trust building thing. That's a way to prove that you are worth what, you, what you're getting paid. Um, and so I always tell people, social media is trailing, is service of the sale, not the beginning. It's not the, uh, uh, it, it's not the leading indicator, right? You don't use that as the tip of the spear to try to sell. If you are, That is a very expensive process and it takes a long time to get sales through social media. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, what do you think today's biggest challenge in regards to sales? I would think right now, the biggest challenge is people don't want to build relationships. Hmm. They, want, they, 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 they want free money right? They want completely hands off, no conversation, no contact, no, no connection, but they still want to sell their services. And so this is where things like ClickFunnels, if you have a large email list and you can put that through your pipeline and you can get customers to buy some online program without ever talking to them, that's great. But you need a big list to be able to do that. And it is an expensive proposition. I would say that the, 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 the biggest problem in, our, in the sales industry right now is that people don't want to have a relationship. And I'll tell you what, I have a limited number of clients, but I have good relationships with them and they buy from me all the time. It's a lot easier to sell to people you have a relationship with because they already know you and they know how you work. So that's, that's my opinion. That's good. Um, before I go to my success question, any other recommendation or best practice you want to, you want to share about sell, with the sales process? Um, yeah, I think, I, I think there's, there's so many pieces of the, uh, of the sales process. And the biggest one that people miss out on is listening. They don't listen to what people are telling them. They don't listen to their prospects. They don't understand what it is that they're really struggling with. And so if, they, if, if you're not listening, now you're just forcing your product on them. 
So I would say that that if you of all of the things that you could do to improve your performance is start listening. Very good. Uh, tell us about what we're going to go to my success question, a little bit different. Oh, I know it's more for the entrepreneur. OK, uh, for everybody who's listening. Uh, I would like for you, if you can, to tell us about one of the most challenging conflict in sales or challenge that you had in the past. And uh, maybe you can share how you overcome it, if you have one. I, I have a hundred. <laughs> I have a lot of them. <laughs> challenges, challenges, challenges. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I, if you don't mind, I'll give you two different challenges. Um, so the first one is very interesting. I had a really, really big challenge without going into the details of the deal. Um, and it was something that I couldn't fix. Um, I'm a man. And they wanted a woman for the project. <laughs> Um, so the reason I brought up that one is sometimes a sales challenge just can't be overcome, <laughs> right? It's like they, they were really looking to have a more diverse, uh, uh, a more diverse team and a more diverse, uh, uh, list of vendors. And so they were looking for a woman and I, I kept hitting a brick wall over and over again. I'm like, these, these be I'm perfect for these people. This, they, they really need me. This is ideal. And then I finally got a straight answer out of them that they were looking for a woman. And I was like, Oh, well, how about I refer you to someone I know? <laughs> so I just referred them over to a, a, a wonderful associate of mine. So sometimes challenges you just can't overcome. Uh, so another challenge, and this is a real challenge in, in sales all the time, is your time and your client's time. I use this regularly because I was, and, and I'm totally open about admitting that I was the uh, terrible at this. I would get on a call with you and I would spend an hour telling you about how great I am. Then I would spend an hour listening to how great you are. Then I would spend an hour discussing your, uh, uh, your challenges and your goals and what you're trying to accomplish. Now we've had this long three hour conversation and it's been a lot of fun, but now I come to realize that I can't even help you. Mm. That is, it feels good for you to make that kind of connection. But the reality is in business, you've got to respect the other person's time and your own. And so the challenge, and I still struggle with it every day, <laughs> trying not to get too deep into a relationship before I know whether or not this person is even a good candidate for what I have. And so I tell everybody, don't think about it as your time. Think about it as wasting the other person's time. And, it, and so I, I develop questions for people on how to find out if this is even a good fit. And if you can ask that in the first interaction, whether you meet them online or at a networking group, just for a few minutes, you should be able to realize that you can't really help this person. And if you can't help this person, then don't schedule an appointment and spend hours talking to them because it doesn't help them. And it's really, it's not helping you. So that's a challenge I still fight with because I love to talk, as you could tell. But uh, and so I and I love building relationships. But within a business, you really have to focus on only talking to the people that are are ideal for getting your help. Beautiful. That's one of the best advice. I, I agree 100 percent. So uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, as you know, Jim, nobody is perfect, right? So I'm sure you made some mistake in the past or you did some screwed up. I don't know if it's a good term, but is there anything you can tell the listeners who want to go in sales or in business that say, hey, I did that in the past. I lost money, time and energy. Don't do it. Anything? You, you make a wrong assumption. I have never made any mistakes. I've been perfect <laughs> my entire life. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll delete this. Uh, no, I made, I, are you kidding? I made a dozen mistakes already just today. Jeez, and those are just the ones I'm counting. No, so um, there is no one biggest mistake, but I will tell you that the, the, the thing that I, that, that cost me probably the most, and we're talking about dollars, time, 
emotion. The thing that really cost me the most was selling something that I didn't believe in. Hmm. Selling something rather than helping. And I talked a little bit about that before. If you're selling something, if you're trying to convince people to buy things that they don't really need, that isn't really for them, that can't really help them, don't. It is, it, it, it is, it is a drain on you on everything, right? It it physically drains you, it emotionally drains you, uh, and, and and at the end of the day, you you don't you don't enjoy what you're doing. And so I would I would immediately look at what you're selling if you want to be in sales. And this may be if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in a business where you have to sell something and you don't like what you're selling, if you don't believe in what you're selling. Maybe that's not the right business for you. You should think about finding a different business because if you're passionate about it and if you believe in what you are selling, well, all the other stuff becomes a little easier. <laughs> but yeah, I spent a long time selling and I was selling timeshares and I don't believe in them. I don't think they're a good investment. I don't think it's right for 99.9% .9 of the population out there, um, but it paid well. <laughs> And so I was making a lot of money, but I just didn't like myself. And so I, I really realized that the money is secondary to being able to sleep at night uh, and knowing, knowing that you have given good service. I don't worry when, when my phone rings and it's a past client, I don't worry about answering the phone because I know I believe in my products. I believe in my services and I know I gave them good value. Okay, very nice. Hey, uh, what's the one thing you do every day in order to grow as a man and an entrepreneur to become a better man? Let's say? So um, this is going to be kind of weird because it has nothing to do with sales, but it has everything to do with success. So uh, nothing to do with sales, but I exercise every single day. Before I do anything else, I, 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 and not like go to the gym and like serious about it, but jumping jacks, push ups, squats, sit ups. It's the first thing I do every single morning because that, that physicality, it really brings everything, everything to life, right? It makes me more energized and able to really enjoy my day. Yes, I agree 100%. And uh, here's a question, because you're already at a really good level, but what motivates you these days? Wait, say that again? What motivates you? Motivates what motivates you? me? So I went through a process, and so I think I'm, I'm going to share something that I used to train on, which is uh, why we own our own business. Uh, and so I think motivation falls into three categories. There's money, freedom, which is the first motivation. Then there's time freedom. And then there's lifestyle freedom. And I feel like they go in that order. I think that when we are in business, the first reason we're in business is because we want money freedom, right? We want to be able to control our own income. And I still regularly motivate myself with finances. So I do that, but it's a little bit forced because I've been doing this for quite a while and I know that I can, I can at least pay my bills, right? And so the, the financial freedom part of it is not the only reason I do it. The, I am in that second level right now where I'm really focused on time freedom. Uh, and I really want my energy and my time to be focused and effective so that I am not wasting any of my time. I'd rather, I'd rather be hanging out at home and, or, or, or hiking than working. And so I want my time to be extremely effective. And so right now, that's the biggest motivator for me is how do I make my, how do I spend more time now to have more time later? Right? How do I focus my efforts so that I am, uh, I am opening up more time for myself in the future. Awesome answer, but let's talk a little bit when you talk about time. I would like to know what do you, what's next for you five years from now, seven years from now? 
for your company. So, so this is why I'm still a little stuck on the financial part yeah. and the time part, because I actually have a pretty big goal. I actually want to build a entrepreneurial community. Um, I would love to buy a small piece, a small office complex and turn it into an entrepreneurial incubator. Nice. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's really what I'm looking at when you say five years from now, that's what I'm definitely looking at is I want to create a, an entrepreneurial incubator where new entrepreneurs can come and learn. Uh, they can get the resources that they need, not only uh, uh, for their day-to-day -day operations, but for their growth. And uh, so that's, that's what I see in my future. And obviously that's going to cost a pretty penny. So I need to, I need to start thinking about the, uh, that's why I'm still focused on the, uh, the financial side of it. Uh, but that's really about switching gears and changing from doing something for individual businesses to doing something for the business community. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what I see in my future is to be able to give back to a larger community. Beautiful. Let's talk about you. The best book recommendation you could give to anybody out there. They say you need to read this in order to be successful. Which book would, would, would that be? So there's a bunch of great ones and there is no uh, uh, any book on business or mindset is going to be phenomenal. My personal favorite favorite is Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it was written, I think, 35, 1935. Wow. So it's almost 100 years old. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It is all about, and this goes back to my philosophy on selling. It's all about making a connection with people and how when you connect, you have far fewer problems. There's less arguments. There's less conflict uh, because you're, you're taking the time to see the other person's perspective. And so uh, it, is a, it is well worth the read. And even though it's an old book, it's still a very easy read. So I encourage everyone. In fact, I have about a dozen copies I give out to people all the time. So anytime, and, and I think you said you hadn't read it yet. So I'll have to give you a copy. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need to read this. It's on my list. But yep. uh, let's go with your favorite quote. Do you have a quote, a favorite quote? I don't have a favorite famous quote. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, my favorite quote actually is from my father. Uh, he <laughs> told me something when I was younger, uh, and it, it's germane even today, uh, and especially in the social media world. What my dad said to me is, I was young. He said, Jimmy, don't worry about what people think of you. They don't. <laughs> so and, I, and, and that was a very deep comment because they really don't. They, they have their own lives. They're not, they're not focused on you. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about what they think of you. They don't. <laughs> it's a very good quote, actually. Uh, all right. So I would like to give you two minutes to uh, share to my listener what you do, how do we contact you, website, everything. Oh, sure, no problem. So this is my little sales pitch opportunity. But guess yeah. what? As I said earlier, I don't sell things. I help people, right? Sure. <laughs> so um, what I do is I help business owners that are struggling with closing deals. That's really where I help. If someone is struggling closing those deals, I help them to understand why they're not closing them and close more than they ever imagined. And as, I, uh, as, as you mentioned earlier in the introduction, and there's ways to do it without being pushy or, 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 or forcing yourself on people. So I have a program called the Max Revenue Program. Um, I, uh, I have several different levels. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching programs as well as group coaching programs. And anyone who has a sales issue going on, I am more than happy to give a 30-minute free consultation. You can find me on LinkedIn at Jim Root Speaks. Uh, that's generally where I live. And so uh, you can just send me a connection message. I, I connect with everybody on there. Uh, or you can go on my website at jimrootspeaks.com. Very nice. Very nice. Listen, I would like, uh, I'm going to give a little 
words right now. I'm going to do my conclusion and we'll say goodbye together in a few seconds. Is that okay with you? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, man. Thank you for You're doing welcome. this great content, great everything. I mean, uh, yeah. And I will uh, send this video to a lot of people. So hopefully you get some contact and you can help and serve other people. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so thank you very much. I also want to thank the listeners. I mean, uh, thank you for joining us. And if you are uh, successful in your business, if you know what you're talking about, like Jim, we are always looking for speakers. We are always looking for other people. My goal is to grow. My goal is to help other people. So I need your help. So if you want to do that, I'll put her email address right below. Zeli, contact her. She's going to tell you what to do. How do we do the, all that stuff? So uh, uh, Jim, again, thank you very much. Any last word before I say goodbye? I have one comment I can make. Yes, sir. Selling is not hard. Stop making it hard. Very nice. And I have <laughs> one comment I would like to make before we go. Stay focused on what you really, really, really want. Guys, see you later. I'll talk to you next week. Awesome. Hold on a second.